Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. And Likeable Science is going to take an interesting direction today. We're moving down into the nanoscale, the realm of the very tiny. Those regular viewers of Likeable Science know that I like water a whole bunch. I saw this very interesting work by uh, Dr. Tuck Sing Wong, and, and he's joining us by uh, Zoom meeting today. Welcome, Tuck Sing. Hi, Ethan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very, very well, thank you. And uh, Tuck Sing is an assistant professor of mechanical engineering and biomedical engineering in the Department of Mechanical and Nuclear Engineering, all at the Pennsylvania State University. Uh, he is a Wormley family early career professor of engineering and is an amazing guy. So uh, a little bit ago, I ran into a, a, a news piece in, in a science news uh, site about called slippery rough surfaces, and I was very intrigued by this because it showed these slippery rough surfaces condensing water out of the air. And I, as my regular viewers will know, I, I've worked in water issues around on the Pacific Islands, and I'm very interested in how people can obtain fresh water. Uh, in any way possible, because these small, isolated islands in the Pacific are surrounded by salt water, but lack a lot of fresh water. So I exchanged emails and talked with Tak Singh, and he agreed to come on the show and tell us about his new uh, development, this bio-inspired slippery rough surfaces, getting water from air. So tell us how you, came, how you sort of came up with this idea, Tak Singh, if you would. Yeah. So. Um uh, as you introduced, um, my, my laboratory at uh, Penn State, um, we study a biological system. Um, indeed, like the name of my laboratory is called Laboratory for Nature Inspired Engineering. So um, we look into the natural world uh, and got inspiration from them. Uh, specifically, um, my group are interested in studying um, surface and interface, like anything that is on the surface of a plant, insects, or even animals. And um, we um, look at the uh, nanoscale and micro scale structures on their surfaces, and then we use advanced manufacturing method to replicate the surfaces uh, for new materials and devices and find um, exciting application for that. And this water harvesting surface that uh, you just mentioned is just one of these examples. Um, we constantly um, look into nature, and um, one of the previous examples that we did um, was this um, picture plan. Um, if you um, look into um, uh, one of the figures, uh, as you see just now, um, that picture plan has evolved a highly slippery surface, uh, such that uh, when insects, such as ants, walk on the, the surface of the picture plan, it will just slide off from the surface and got digested by the plant. So by studying um, surfaces like picture plant, uh, we can come up with super slippery surfaces um, that can be used for uh, a number of different applications. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's really good to be able to make surfaces that, that have these various varying degrees of roughness, smoothness, hydrophobi mm -hmm. hydrophobicity, hydrophilicity, you know, the mm -hmm. hating or loving of water, and those characteristics that really allow us to play a lot of interesting games uh, with, with surfaces and, and water, right? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, like um, for example, just um, give you uh, an example of a material that we developed uh, in our lab um, earlier. Um, if um, if we, we go ahead to look at uh, one of the movie number two, and um, for that, um, you will see that we have created a synthetic slippery surface um, that can repel um, all kinds of fluid, um, such as crude oil, um, um, as shown in, in the um, uh, movie number two. Uh huh. So this, uh -huh. the slippery surface there is what it's called slips, and it's and it's slipperier than, than porous Teflon. You're saying here, right? That's right. That's right. So in this we in, in this movie you will see that uh, at the top panel, uh, the the surface is coated with slips. Uh, which stands for slippery liquid infused power surfaces. In the middle panel is a Teflon material, and the bottom panel is just a typical aluminum. Uh, you will see, like, um, as sticky as crude oil or even blood job, 
it doesn't stay on slips, but it's staying on everywhere else. Right. Yeah. So this is our, this is one of those um, uh, product that we develop from the inspiration of the picture plan. Yeah, excellent. And, and we think of Teflon as being a very slippery, a very slick surface. That's why it was developed, right? To not have things that's stick right. to it. And here you've right, you yeah. got materials that are much, much more slippery than it. So that's that's pretty amazing. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, it's, it is interesting that by looking at nature, you find nature has typically developed some of these same kinds of materials already for their own for its, its own use in, in different organisms, right? Mm -hmm. Because in the case of the pitcher plant, it wants the insects to slip down and fall into the, the digestive liquid in, inside the plant, right? That's right. That's right. That's how, that's how nature does it. And indeed, we we take the concept and move a step uh, further in creating synthetic material that lo not only can repel insects, but also can repel a, a broad range <laughs> of liquid. As you just saw in the movies, it can repel crude oil, blood, and we even further develop it to uh, material that it can repel ice or even bacteria for anti-biofouling um, coating. Oh, okay, yeah. That, that's very, very valuable to have those multifunctional surfaces then. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, to get into the, the issue of water harvesting, though, where, how did this idea come up? Yeah, so um, the, the surface, the water harvesting surface we developed recently um, was, was also inspired uh, partly by uh, the slippery surface of the pitcher plant. And on top of that, um, we um, also look into different plant species, in this case, the rice leaf. Um, if you stick an electron microscope on the rice leaf surface, um, you will see um, there's a, a different uh, microscopic and nanoscopic um, groove structures, which helps to uh, move uh, water droplets in one direction. So by combining the, um, the slippery surface concept from the pitcher plant, and the directional uh, micro and nano groove structures of the rice leaf, we combine them to together to create this uh, synthetic surface, what we call the slippery rough surface, which um, uh, can um, collect water from air um, through um, either a fog harvesting mechanism or surface condensation, and then they can transport the water away from the surface very effectively so that we can directly uh, transfer water from air to the surface and then to, um, to, to somewhere that can be collected. Right, because yeah, you want to be able to move that water around rather than have it stay in place where it collects, right? You need to be able to move it so it con condenses and gets into bigger and bigger droplets and finally drops off or goes into a container and can gather. That's right, yeah. that's right. So, so that is really like um, the, the concept of how this uh, slippery rough surface came up. Like we were thinking whether we can create a synthetic surface that combine multiple surface property of different plant species to create a multifunctional surface. And in this case, we put pitcher plant and the rice leaf together. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's very, very ingenious. The, the smooth slickness of the pitcher plant and the a larger scale structure of the rice leaf to, to guide those uh, guide the droplets so that once they form, uh, mm -hmm. they, they do they slip where you want them to slip, right? <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Excellent. So um, in in creating this service, so this is the concept, but in actually making them, um, there's some uh, more details sure. uh, into the design. Um, for example, um, we know that um, for different surfaces, for example, surface if it is hydrophilic water likes to attract on the surface. Right. And on the other hand, if a surface that is hydrophobic, as the name implies, water doesn't like it. Right. So um, in the past, when we developed slips, um, it was mostly based on hydrophobic surface chemistry, mm -hmm. meaning that like um, uh, we designed a surface such that it can repel most of the liquid. Right. But now we want to do it in a different way. We actually want water to attract on the surface. So the very first step that we did is to modify um, the surface chemistry of the, the original slips. So um, if you look at our movie number four, in one of the movie movie number four, um, you will see that um, just previously, um, my group has developed um, this uh, coating um, that um, on one hand, you can create hydrophobic slips, but on the other hand, you can make a slips hydrophilic as well. So that like uh, water in air uh, would like to attract onto the surface of slips. So that is really the, the very um, first step. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in, in the video, you can see um, on the top side is the hydrophobic slips where the water just falls up and slide up, and on the lower end, the water um, try to flatten out and then slip away. 
And um, based on this um, um, surface chemistry, then uh, we saw that even at the micro scale, it can attract water more effectively than a hydrophobic surface, as you can see uh, in this um, uh, microscopic uh, video, which is taken by environmental scanning electron microscope. Yeah. And further, um, we need roughness, because roughness helps us to um, uh, attract water from air more effectively because of the larger surface area. And not only that, because the groove structure helps to carry water away more effectively through capillary action than uh, just a barely flat surface, as you can see uh, earlier in the, uh, in the video, that um, with a micro-groove uh, slippery surface, it can absorb water from air and transport it effectively as compared to just a flat, uh, slippery surface. Right, and it's very interesting that both the hydrophobic condition, which makes water bead up on top of things and sort of stay away from a surface, and the hydrophilic mm -hmm. condition, where water is actually drawn flat down onto the surface, both can be used for the same purpose. It's very, very ingenious that you figured out that you could sort of play this game either way. Uh, yeah. And there may, be, mm -hmm. there may be advantages and disadvantages under certain circumstances to doing one versus the other, right? Definitely, definitely. Like uh, in cases you want to repel water, you want a more hydrophobic surface. But in case you want to attract water, you want a surface that is thick and slimy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Great. Um, this is uh, this is this is intriguing stuff because again, you're you're. You're looking at nature, you're developing surfaces that both the, the surface structure itself has certain kinds of properties related to water, and then you structure the surface so it can actually uh, both have more surface area and also can guide the water going to where you want it. So it's, you're really balancing a lot of different, sort of different constraints and different almost levels of control over your materials. This is uh, truly material science at, at, at the cutting edge, I think. Yes, definitely. There's, um, there, there were a lot of consideration for us to um, develop this materials, how, how we can optimize the surface structures, surface chemistry, so that it can harvest water uh, at its maximum weight. So it, there were a lot of uh, engineering design consideration into making this material. Yes, exactly. It's, uh, and the other things, how, how much, where, what materials are you actually using to do this? How available, how expensive are those materials? Will they hold up under? You know, uh, conditions, outdoor conditions where they may be used. You know, will they stand up over time? Uh, a lot of different factors you have to you have to, to think about to make to make this a usable material, right? Yeah. So right now, um, we um, we we did demonstrate a concept. We showed the proof of concept that slippery rough surface um, can collect um, uh, water from air mm -hmm. and uh, perform better than uh, many other surfaces, which I, I will um, um, talk about in a minute. And um, in terms of the uh, material cost, uh, right now, since this is a proof of concept, uh, we use uh, we use silicon um, to make this material, which is a relatively expensive uh, material uh, at this point uh, to make the surfaces. But our technology can be applied to um, um, other uh, low-cost material. For example, if you want to fabricate this um, onto material like uh, aluminum, so it's quite straightforward to translate that concept into um, into this um, surfaces, um, depending on what application that 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 you're interested in, and um, and for if it is used for outdoor application, um, this concept can also be applied. You can um, um, kind of uh, formulate um, the, the 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 surface coating um, such that um, it um, can be used for um, outdoor uh, conditions and things like that. Yeah, th this is this is sort of the amazing. Uh, juggling act that you're doing all the time is figuring out the, the, the different structural levels from the very low, very tiny nano scale up, up to almost micro scale, uh, mm -hmm. the, the properties of the surface, the materials you're going to use, uh, the processes. Great. Yeah, it's, it's all amazing. And we're going to look into this in even more depth when we come back. Right now, we're going to take a brief break. I'm talking with uh, Tak Sing Wong uh, from uh, the uh, uh, Pennsylvania State University. And I'm Ethan Allen, your host of Likeable Science, and we'll be back in one minute. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. 
the possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Aloha, I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at three, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. And you're back here with us on Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today, joining me via Skype, is uh, Dr. Kok Sing Wong uh, from the Pennsylvania State University. And we're talking about uh, bio-inspired slippery rough surfaces and getting water from air. And we talked in the first part of the show about how he looked at the world of nature, and particularly how various plants, the pitcher plants, have a very, a very slippery surface that water slides off of, that, that uh, insects can slip down and get trapped by these pitcher plants. And it was inspired also by the, the microstructure on the rice leaves that have little fine little grooves that actually guide condensed water either into or off of the leaves, depending upon the, the need. Uh, and how he's combined these into some, uh, making a material that condenses water very effectively and sort of runs it off effectively. And now to, to sort of move ahead on this toxin, you, you, so you begin to have to sort of compare this to uh, among different sort of different combinations of your, of your constraints, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so take it away here. Tell, tell us how you, how you did this. And uh, we've got some movies I know coming up for you. Yeah, so um, of course, like when we develop this material, we need to do a benchmarking. We, we need to compare with other existing um, state-of-the-art technology. So with that, um, we uh, take two particular surfaces for comparison. The first surface is called a superhydrophobic surface. And um, superhydrophobic surface uh, is inspired by a plant species called a lotus leaf. So um, for those of you who have played around with lotus leaf before, if you put water on it, water doesn't stick on it. Indeed, it rolls around on the surfaces. And, and the reason why is that is because on the lotus leaf, it has this um, two levels of micro and nano structures which helps them to trap a thin layer of air. It's kind of like um, uh, playing air hockey. If you have that air, la air layer, everything on top of it is very slippery, but without that air layer, everything becomes sticky. So that super hydrophobic uh, lotus leaf is working on this mechanism. Mm -hmm. So we thought this would be the very uh, good first example to compare with our um, slippery rough surface for water harvest, harvesting performance. And if you look at uh, movie number seven, right. Right. Um, which we saw a side-by-side -side comparison of the water harvesting between the super hydrophobic surface and the slippery rough surface. Right, so, so on, the, um, on the left mm -hmm. is the super hydrophobic surface and on the right is your slippery rough surface, which is gathering bigger drops, they're running off more quickly. Mm -hmm. You can see it's going to be right. much more efficient at pulling water, at condensing water, and, and turning it into usable water. That's right. And even if you look at the, the microscopic uh, version of the process, you will see that for superhydrophobic surface, there's a lot of droplets that is sticking at the micro and nano structures. But for the slippery rough surface, once droplets are formed on the surface, they just transport away immediately. So, um, and so in this example, we saw that slippery rough surface performs much better than just the regular superhydrophobic surface. So that is a good news. Right. And um, and then the second surface that um, we saw uh, is we compare slippery rough surface with a slips surface. Okay, so slips, as I mentioned earlier, uh, was really a, a product that is inspired by the Lepentis pitcher plant. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we compare the water harvesting performance of slips and the slippery rough surface. And this will uh, lead us to movie number nine. So um, in movie number nine, that what you would see is on the left-hand side, um, that um, is a slips coating. Um, if the movie comes up in a second. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so, it, it, yeah. we're looking at it here. Yeah, and I can see on the left side these tiny little drops on your slip surface, and on the right again, the slippery rough surface is pulling bigger yeah. droplets. They're running down, they're condensing together, forming large droplets at the bottom. Again, it's going to be a much more usable system for harvesting water. That's exactly right, yeah. W wonderful. Amazing to watch that. Amazing. 
Yeah, and now if we uh, put slippery rough surface together with super hydrophobic surface and slips, then you can see all three surfaces uh, in the same uh, condition for water harvesting if we go to movie number 10. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, we got that on now. Yeah. Yeah, so you will see that um, on the very left hand side is a slippery rough surface. Right. In the middle um, is a slips, and on the right hand side, the far right hand side is a super hydrophobic surface under the same exact experimental condition mm -hmm. where uh, water uh, mist is um, uh, shooting onto the, all the surfaces at the same time. And you can see the, the big differences between the water harvesting on slippery rough surfaces. Right, at the left there, the, the surfaces. Yeah, at the left, you can see all that, all the big droplets collecting at the bottom just really quickly now. And all the, the medium-sized droplets running off very quickly into them. It's gathering right. water very, yeah. very efficiently. Very neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed, like um, we, um, if this material uh, is scaled to a large scale, uh, we estimate that our material can actually collect about 120 liter per meter square per day. So um, un under the, the, the condition that we are testing, and like um, just give you an idea, typical, for, like for example, fog harvesting uh, material that they use currently, it can collect about one to 20 liter per meter square per day. So. That means slippery rough surface actually have at least an order of magnitude um, higher performance than current uh, fog harvesting material. Yeah, that be that that's, that's has tremendous impact in, in places, uh, mountainous desert regions mm -hmm. where they get nice cool nights and you know, even with very small amounts of moisture in the air, if it has something to condense against, it, it will do it. And uh, if you, yeah. you, you've got a system there that, that'll now make it much more efficient grab that water, turn into little droplets, and move those droplets down into a reservoir very quickly. Mm-hmm, yeah. that's exactly right, yeah. Now, just, uh, I ask you to speculate here for a moment. What about in a, in a warm, humid, tropical environment on a tropical island where you never really get any fog or anything, but the air is just constantly humid, not very much difference in temperature between day and night? Well, how, what do you think your surface is gonna do? Yeah, so um, with that, um, with that, um, right now we are developing uh, um, uh, uh, surfaces that can condense water uh, in those conditions. The concept of slippery rough surface would still apply in that case, but then we need to uh, cool the surface um, down to the dew point uh, where the water droplets start to condense on the surfaces. So we would need uh, additional energy input in, in those scenarios. Ah, no, what we need is actually what my guest last week, uh, Aswath Rahman, from uh, from, uh, from Skycool Systems has developed a photonic radiator system that passively, mm -hmm. passively dumps out heat uh, and cools itself so the system actually stays cooler than the air around it, even in bright sunlight. So we can combine your system with his, cool the airs down, and it will condense the water very efficiently. Yep, that would work. Like any system like what you just described, uh, combined with the surfaces, will work to condense our water in a like a human environment. Yeah, huh? That 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 could be that could be something. We could, we we, we yep. could be onto something here. <laughs> Definitely. No, the, the I mean we, we we laugh, but the you know the the tropical islands here, particularly the low lying ones, have very 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 limited fresh water supplies and must await rain to gather rain water to to drink. Uh, and But their air is humid all the time, and I keep thinking if there were ways to gather the humidity out of the air very efficiently and effectively, as you apparently developed, uh, and, and gather that, then they would not have to wait for rain. Even in, even in drought conditions on these islands, the air is humid. They're, they're, they're right by the ocean. There's no place in these islands more than a few hundred yards from the ocean, so there's plenty of moisture in the air. Um, yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's that's really the goal. Like um, one of, one of our important goal for this research is ultimately develop a system that you can decentralize the water supply, mm -hmm. regardless where you go, you can get fresh water anywhere from clean air. That will that is really like our ultimate goal. Excellent, excellent. Because this sounds like something that will be tremendously useful out here. I, I I'd love to uh, stay in touch with you and test test this on out and uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, see if we could work uh, work a good system out because the the people in the Marshall Islands and Kiribati and, and all these places are are facing the, the increased climate variability. They get these longer and longer droughts, and mm -hmm. you, they just can't can't keep up big enough rainwater catchment systems in some cases to hold enough water well enough long enough to to survive during droughts. And they, they need need a lot of water 
But if you're gathering it directly out of the air all the time, uh, mm -hmm. that, it, that should really be, that could be a game-changing technology for them. So, yep. so yeah. I, I, uh, I, I, I thank you for your work. That, that's, it's truly amazing. I think we had, we had one more figure to look at, right? Uh, figure four, I believe. Uh, oh, that's right, yeah. So that one last figure was really summarizing um, the performance um, of slipper rough surface versus other state-of-the-art um, technology. And um, if, if uh, you look at the plot um, that you can see, um, yeah, we see uh, that, on the, at the right the, is your, your slippery rough surface, right? Uh, that's right. So on the very right hand side, the tallest bar is slippery rough surface. The, 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 um, the, the one on the, the right hand side, the, the two bars on the right hand side. And the west is a, a super hydrophobic surface that is on the left hand side. And the middle two um, are the slip surface. So as you can see, um, quantitatively, we measure like how much water that can be collected by slippery rough surface. And as I mentioned earlier, um, slippery rough surface um, at our last scale, uh, it can scale to about 120 liters of water per meter square per day. And that is about like an order of magnitude higher than the typical um, bulk harvesting material that can collect water um, daily yeah. at this point. Yeah, that's, that's, that's stunning. That's, that's, that's amazing that by manipulating the materials, manipulating the, the, surface, the surface chemistry, the surface morphology, you, you've managed to get that, that level of improvement uh, in, in, this, uh, in this particular dimension that you wanted to do with the water harvesting. So, yeah, definitely. This, this, is, um, this is the uh, nature inspiration and nanotechnology work at its best. Exactly. exactly. Nature is endlessly inventive, and, and it's very nice to see people like you working so hard to take advantage of nature's inventiveness, add your own inventiveness on top of it, and build more and more useful surfaces, more and more useful products for us that can help people in all kinds of situations. That, that's about going to wrap us up. Uh, Tak Sing uh, Wong uh, from, from uh, uh, University of from Pennsylvania State, excuse me. Uh, I, I thank you very much for being here with me on Likeable Science. You've been a, a great guest. We've, I, I've learned just a huge amount from you. And as I'm sure I have our audience, thank you so much. Ethan, yeah, thank you for having me. You, you're most welcome. I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Sounds good. And for our audience here, I hope you'll come back and join us next week for uh, another episode of Likeable Science here on ThinkTech Hawaii.